Okay, we're here with Jimmy. It's chapter two of Ben Hogan's Five Lessons. It's all about the stance and the posture. So we just did a quick recap of the grip. And uh, when it comes to the posture, Hogan was pretty opinionated as well. The first thing that he talked about is when you're hitting a golf shot, just kind of theory wise, you want to align your club face first. So let me show you here one. He's talking about you've got a target, you're tracing an intermediate target back to the line, okay. something just in front. So you're going to want to set your club face to your intermediate target first and then set your body towards that uh, club face. So the club face comes in first and then we set our body. That's the first thing. And then uh, additionally, the, the goal with a proper stance is to facilitate this flowing swing that's going to be able to really release hard through the shot. So there's some nuances that he mentions in terms of getting set up properly. Um, he mentions that a lot of people mistake the setup for something that's kind of static where you're staying in this posture and kind of just swinging and, and trying to keep everything locked out when in fact you're really doing quite a bit of shifting and turning. Uh, so you're trying to facilitate this kind of athletic move. So um, the first thing to think about, I think, is just the width of your feet. Okay. So with a five iron, he wants you to be shoulder width, which got a ruler out here. We can measure what shoulder width means and okay. use this. Um, well, let's go ahead and see what we're talking about shoulder width. So about 19 inches. Okay. Perfect. So for a five iron, you'd be about 19 inches. As you hit a driver, you might uh, extend it out a little bit further than shoulder width. And this is a driver. That's called an eight iron. Eight iron. So an eight iron, in theory, you might kick it in an inch. Okay. Okay. And then a five iron is what he mentions as being kind of your shoulder width okay. starting point. Okay. Uh, as you get a club that the ball travels further, you're getting a little bit wider in your feet. Um, he talks about the angle of the feet. So as a right-handed player, he wants your front foot kicked out about 20 degrees. He calls it a quarter turn. So this front foot, as if you're hitting a ball, let's go ahead and get you like we're going to hit a ball. Okay, so here. Okay, so we're just about shoulder width, maybe just inside shoulder width with an eight iron ball position wise. How do you determine which iron six iron so how do you determine whether um, you're going 19 or you're going further in or you're coming in uh, with the iron, with the iron generally they're all going to be about shoulder width I wouldn't get too lost in, in how narrow or wide it should feel wide and stable I think is what he's trying to say okay, most you. people are too narrow okay so at I've, least shoulder I've width been this far. Yeah, that's going to kind of immobilize your lower body. He talks about that also okay. where you, there's kind of a sweet spot where you want it to be okay. about shoulder width. And so our front foot is going to be kicked out in this direction. There we go. That's going to protect that knee and also allow you to really explode through the shot without stalling. And then he wants this trail foot perpendicular to the line of flight. So you, he wants that toe 90 degrees to that ruler. Perfect. That looks good. And uh, ba -ba 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 -ba. generally, you want to think about being in balance, he says, both laterally and front to back. So that means if I'm going to sneak up on you, get ready to hit the shot, like put the club down like you're going to hit. So if somebody comes in here and is messing with you, mm -hmm. and they're trying to push you off the ball, you shouldn't be able, you should be able to withstand me okay. pushing on you where you're you're really solid in your setup. And and what do you have to do? Think about what do you have to do to be able to resist me there? What, your toes? What yeah, just tell me what the feel is. You feel it in your lower body mainly? Yeah. Feeling like you're gripping the ground? Yeah. Okay, cool. So that's kind of this active he calls it active relaxation, where your muscles aren't tense, but they're like primed. Right, okay. They're ready to, to move. Um, let's see here. Our left elbow points at our left hip bone. 
and our right elbow points at our right hip bone as we're addressing the ball. So kind of play with that feel and how we can get our elbows pointed at our hip bones. And he calls these the pockets of your elbows. He wants your pockets facing the sky. So as we grip this thing, this will be up, this will be up. Uh, it's a bit of an exaggeration. It's the right idea. Here we go. That same there. That same there. Perfect. All right. And then to get into your stance, they used to use these things back in the day when people would go to a golf tournament. So it's on a bit of an angle, starting totally straight up and down. Just feel like you sit down into it about two inches. So I'm bending from the thighs down like that a little bit. Okay, so that's a bit too severe. That'd be like that. Just bring it about to there. You might not totally get to the seat, but I think what most people realize is it's not as severe as a sit down as you think it might be. We're just getting down a little bit. And then what brings us all the way down is bending our neck down to the ball. So our upper body is staying fairly erect, fairly straight up as we come down onto that chair. And then we just let our neck relax. Yeah, there's a, there's a supple bend to the knees. So start as tall as we can, and then bring it down just a, a little bit, okay? And then fall into sort of the balls of your feet. Okay, good. Excellent. All right, we'll get to swinging in here in a minute, but this is kind of like the foundation of a house. All right, he calls that the semi-sitting posture. You're trying to sit down on one of these sports sticks while the upper body stays kind of upright. A lot of people round too much in the upper body. You're trying to stay up and tall. We come down a little bit, and then we bend the neck down. All right, we got our front foot kicked out. We got the trail foot perpendicular to the line of flight. Mm -hmm. uh, the knees are actually pointed in a little bit, according to Hogan. So that would look something like this, that would be a huge exaggeration, but instead of them being flared out like that, mm -hmm. there's just a subtle little kick in of the knees. And that's gonna, what that's gonna do is it's gonna restrict our hips. If we don't have the knees out, or in rather, the, the hips are gonna be able to maybe move a little bit more than he wanted. So the way he thought about the hip was at the top of your swing, you want your belt buckle at your right toe. So practice moving from starting position to that hip belt buckle pointed to your right toe. Right toe. Okay, good. So as we're moving off the ball, that club is moving, the belt buckle should aim to the right toe. Um, let's see. Now we can, now we got the lower body where it needs to be. Let's think about the upper body. So as a right-handed golfer, the left arm is basically fully extended. It shouldn't feel locked, but it's definitely straighter than the right arm. And the goal really, according to Hogan, is to be able to keep this arm as an extension of the shaft. So if we can look kind of from this angle on video, we should be able to swing this club pretty successfully, feeling like the left arm is just an extension of the shaft. And what's gonna allow us to keep that straight is by turning our chest with it. Okay. And you're gonna feel a connection between the upper part of that arm and your chest. So it's gonna move like this. Almost like you're gripping something you under your arm. Yeah, you're gonna feel a connection between upper arm and chest as that just stays straight. Here. Yep, feel like you're clutching something under your armpit okay. and keeping it pinned. It's going to restrict your motion a little bit, but you want to feel like that left arm is staying pretty straight. Um, there's a slight bend to the right arm. Oh, one quick note on the reason for the long left arm is to create as wide of an arc as possible. So wide arc would be this. See how far away from my body that club is as opposed to if I were to swing like this. That's not as wide as that. So we're trying to keep that width is really the goal. That's the reason we're trying to keep our left arm long. And he, he says that's basically throughout the swing is the feel for him that he wants a long left arm, not locked out, not rigid, 
but that's a, a good way of kind of syncing up the turn. Uh, the right arm is slightly bent throughout the swing, and the elbow on the right arm is what hinges the club up. So he mentions that the right elbow, the first bit of the swing, doesn't move too much at all. It kind of stays where it is, and then as it folds, that left arm stays long, right elbow folds, you want that right elbow down to the ground. So let's practice feeling like the left arm stays straight and that right elbow folds and points at the ground to start our backswing. Mm -hmm. okay. Let's uh, get, imagine you're hitting a ball. I'm going to keep your head on one consistent level as we turn. Okay. Good. Excellent. Yeah, I felt that crack in my chest. You're going to move some new muscles, I guarantee it. Okay, so let's focus on that right elbow for a second. As we are coming off the ball, we're hinging this way to where the right elbow is pointed at the ground, and it almost feels like you can hold a pizza tray at the top of your swing, like you're, you're right in this position. Okay. Good. Excellent. Now let's try this without a, a heavy club. Now we've can, we can do a right hand only, and we're just going to work on that right elbow. We're going to feel it coming in, and then whoosh it. That's just going to help you kind of sync okay, up the so athletic motion. Just the right hand for a moment. Okay, so right hand. Right hand only. You're going to feel that elbow stay close to your side to start the swing, and then as it folds, the elbow points to the ground. Just keep playing with it. You'll find it. Bring a little, maybe a little bit more suppleness in that arm just to allow me to hear a whoosh. Let's just focus on the whoosh. Give me as loud of a whoosh. Okay, a little louder. Good. Excellent. Nice. Good. All right, starting to get the hang of it. As a true beginner, that's looking good. Uh, see if I've left anything out. Uh, he wants to, one last note on the knees being pointed in, it, it acts as a governor for the hips as well as we're trying to use the inside muscles is what he's saying. He, we're trying to use these muscles, these muscles, these muscles to swing the club. Um, I brought this extension cable deal out here as sort of a representation of a drill that he mentions, it's more of an illustration of the arms being bound. He wants the elbows and the arms to feel really close together in the swing. I tried hitting a few balls with this earlier, but it wasn't quite the right setup. But I think visualizing the arms moving like this. Yeah, yeah, sort of like the dog wagging the tail sort of thing. Um, the arms are staying sort of fixed as the chest is turning this thing. So uh, your arms might be a little thick enough to do just a double wrap on this deal. Let's see if we can uh, hold on to that regular club again and I'll see if we can bind up the arms to have the right feel. So take your normal grip if you would and I'll try to slide this over. So generally we're trying to feel this all acting as one unit. He says that the arms are going to look like two equilateral sides of a triangle and then there's like a, a steeple. The club shaft looks like a steeple popping out the middle. So see if we can just get used to moving this all, this triangle as one unit. Good. The left arm feels straight, the right arm bends.
And if the right elbow isn't making much sense, let's take a grip with the right hand on the club. Left hand is coming in like this on the side of the club. It's not interacting with the grip, it's just sort of glued to the side. And then feel what natural swing occurs as we turn. This right elbow should feel like it's pinned in to the side a little bit more and hinging to where that elbow hinges down at the ground. There you go. Good. It's gonna set like that. Good. Excellent. All right, so that's sort of the crash course on Hogan's second chapter. If I think of any more notes, I'll throw them in on the back edge of this video. Okay. Uh, but let's try hitting a few balls now. So we always want to have a target, even as a beginner. And we're going to want to use a tee to start off. It okay. just makes it a little easier. All right, so let's just say we're going to go over this first white post. This first one? Straight ahead? Yep, on top of that mound there. So this is going to kind of represent our toe line. You don't have to be right on it. You just want to be parallel with it. Good, that front foot is kicking out nicely. Ball position wise, I would say that's a little too far back. So you would want to shift this way to where the ball is aligned just forward of center. So here? That would be a little too far. Somewhere about right. Uh, I'll let's play you about right here. If you're gonna not move your feet. So what you're doing is you're aligning this with this back heel? Is that what you're doing? Just inside of it. So this would be true middle and you want to be about two balls in front of middle. Okay. All right, so let's try to feel like we're sitting down on that sports seat that's sitting behind you to get kind of down into our ready posture. Okay. Let's take one last look at the grip. Left hand V is pointed at the right eye, right hand V is at the chin. And then just think about whooshing the club for a second. You had that little club that didn't have a head on it. Can we were, the ball with the yeah, let's try to whoosh it. Just see what naturally comes out. Okay, so the reason we whiffed that one is because we moved our head. So we swung and the head came up like that. Okay. So we would want to make a swing. We would want to make a whoosh while keeping our head in the same relative okay. position. Okay, got contact. Let this thumb fall right here. There we go. Then we hide that right thumb. You want to keep your head still, and we're just going to practice whooshing. Okay, what am I doing? Raising up? Just a little bit. You'll find it. Good. All right, let's take a second to talk a bit about the pivot. Okay. So let's cross the club across your chest like this. Good. As we turn, the left shoulder is actually going to go down a little bit to where the left shoulder points at the ball. Okay. And then you're going to point your right shoulder at the ball. You're just going to mirror it here to there. Good. And if you can achieve that without moving your head, you'll get super consistent. Good. You're going to use some different muscles, I bet. It's going to feel like a side, side bend sit up. Yeah, you can feel it. Left shoulder down, right shoulder down. Yep. Okay. Let's see if that is the thought in mind, if we can move the club where we just go left shoulder down, right shoulder down. Okay. Let's turn that into some kind of swing. And that actually helps us keep our posture more than anything, the proper pivot. Let that thumb... Okay, so I feel like I'm too close to the ball. Okay. So what do I do? Back off it. Okay, so come here. Yep. And let your thumb uh, rest on the shaft. It's kind of off to the side here, so let it okay. fall in there. Okay. Nice. Okay. Didn't want it to go that direction. I was just swinging the swing. Yeah. No, right now we're just trying to feel some. This is like a baby learning to crawl here. This is brand new. Here we go.
left shoulder down, right shoulder down. Good. Okay, on this uh, practice swing, I want you to imagine that there is a ball on that tee, okay. but after you hit that tee, I want to see a divot like that about right here. Give me a divot in front of the ball. A divot in front of the ball? In front of the tee, I'm sorry. It's all right. You, it's just learning. You got to learn where the bottom of the arc is, and don't worry about messing up the ground. That's what it's there for. Good. Cool. Okay. The reason we do that is because we want the club coming in on a descending angle into impact. So it's coming okay. down. It interacts with the ball, and it's actually still going down through the shot. So that's you. why the divot happens I after the ball. Okay. So when I'm swinging, I got to because I'm just trying to hit it up here, but I need to hit it down below. You always want to try to feel like you're putting a divot after the ball. So sometimes I'll put a T after the ball and give that as the target. Feel like you're swinging to this and the ball just happens to get in the way. Okay. Nice. That's more compressed. Try again. Divot after the ball is the goal. Nice. Excellent. So that one spun from right to left, which is called a draw. Okay. Most people hit a slice all their life. So you're already hitting a draw. That means your grip is good okay. and your path is good. It just means your club face, for whatever reason, on that shot was a little shut. Okay, so if I'm trying to hit straight, then why, I'm hitting, why am I hitting to the left? It's because of the angle of the club face at impact. It's the way that you're releasing the club just ever so slightly, a couple of degrees shut rather than being aimed right at your target. But right now as a beginner, it, okay. it's, uh, what's the word? Unrealistic to worry about curve right now. Just contact is, is the goal. It's, it takes a lot of balls to get going in golf. A lot of reps. Excellent, cool. A lot of times when the hook gets going at, for a beginner, too, the feet are staying tethered to the ground, kind of like this. Okay, yeah. So there's sort of a dynamic shift that's missing here. So I want you to think about um, we're, we're skipping rocks, basically. We're down on the edge of a creek, and we're trying to skip a rock. So we're going to shift back and then through here, there. The lower body's a little bit more dynamic. Okay. I noticed, okay, so, because I am keeping my, this foot grounded, I mm -hmm. need to turn it a little bit. Yeah, we'll find a, a little bit more fluidity in it. Okay. These are all just little things that build on each other. All right, so let's just throw a few. No club right now. Just give me some sidearm, skip the rock feel. Okay. Get it out about like that. Good. See how your lower body's naturally going that way. Yeah. It's good. When we whoosh the club too, we do that automatically. All right, so where's our eight iron? Okay, so feel just that little bit extra greasiness in the lower body where we're shifting and turning to try to Does release. Stance look okay? Stance looks good. Okay. This thumb keeps oh, wanting yeah. to get out. Okay, that's just gonna change the way your, your wrists can hinge. Okay, we had a divot before the ball. Let's get it after the ball. Nice. Awesome. Okay. I got you. Nice, getting it airborne. Let me check some positions with you. Setup's looking good. All right, so hang on to it. Mm -hmm. Halfway back, 
when this club is parallel with the ground, mm -hmm. this angle, the club face angle, should match your spine angle. Well, now, what's my spine angle? Oh. So spine angle, hold that position. So from this, your posture is kind of, your spine's about right like there. Okay. So that club face is a little shut relative to that. So you can feel like it matches this would be right about on your spine angle right okay, here. I got you. So spine. That's probably why it's hooking a little bit. Okay. Not, not terrible. So try to reach my hand and stop. To it's stop at my good. hand. Okay. It's all good. Okay, so that's severely shut. You would want it somewhere about right in here. Okay, that's so a good checkpoint. When the club is parallel to the ground, it's easy to move it further than you think. So just come... Uh, where the shaft is parallel with the ground and meet my hand. Good. Okay, so the way that you're getting there is a little early on the wrists. So let's just move the club. Feel like this triangle's maintained. Mm -hmm. Left arm stays long mm -hmm. from here to here. It's like a pendulum of a grandfather okay. clock. So it's you're saying move. that's where my swing needs to be? That's the beginning of the swing. Okay. The first part of the swing is almost just like a grandfather clock pendulum from okay. here. This triangle is maintained here to here. And this angle is trying to match your spine angle. Okay. okay, and then the elbow folds in. We've already learned this one. Here to here, elbow folds in. And this butt end of the club is going to point at the, the line of flight, basically. Okay. It's going to point at your target line. So keep that width in your left arm. Your arm is bending in. You want to feel like that left arm stays long as that right elbow folds. Better. So it's got to be like this. I'll clean it up a little bit more. Okay. Up to the top. Okay, so when we set this thing, we want, to, if we oh, had something protruding out the end, you want it aimed at your target line. I got you. As it sets, the butt end of the club is at your target line. That's a good check. That's closer. Now keep that left arm long, and you'll have to turn your chest to be able to do that. Okay. There we go. Now we're looking kind of golfy. <laughs> I like it. No, I'm serious. That was a good pivot. That was good. Left arm long, not locked out, but long. Okay, good. It's good to go slow. Do it real slow motion. Better. Good. Hang on to it. I'll help you. Okay. One other note. You're, as you're setting up to this thing, the club face is quite a bit shut at setup. What do you, what do you mean? Shut you is like the orientation of the face. So you're setting up with the grooves of the club okay. aimed left of our target out there. So if we're trying to shoot down this line, which is putting us at that first post, you want the, the club to be looking this way instead of this way. So if this thing had eyeballs on it, that would be looking okay, a little that's left. Okay, why it's going over there. Part, part okay. of the reason that and the face is shut. So we're, again, back to Hogan. He's saying align your club face first and then set your body up okay, to you. that club face. So let's, got I got it set square there okay. now. So get your setup around that. Okay. Does that look like crazy? Does it look like a face is wide open or something? Okay. It probably will look more open. Okay. Okay, and now in this situation, your ball position is too far back, so bring this foot back a little bit. There we go. That's good. You want it just ahead of your middle okay. of your stance. Okay. Looks a little funky, to be honest. Okay. We're, what, what, we're what, still what, learning to... What, what's funky about it, probably? Um, okay, so this hand be rotated just a touch. There we go. Okay. Uh, get tall again. Start start as tall as we can. Okay, and then just have a little sit, and then let that neck fall from there. Generally, I think you just need to be a bit taller. Okay, good. Yeah, let's play within that posture. Nice. Yeah, you're looking much more swingy. And that was setting nicely at the top. Okay. Well, I think what got me is when you told me to point this to, to the ground. Okay. I think that helped me a lot. Okay, good. With the whole swing. 
Sometimes, yeah, that top of the swing feel can, you can just kind of get there more naturally. So I'm sitting this here. Set the face, yeah, imagine that this is tracing your target line. Okay. And you wanna. So I'm here, here, right? That's a little open. Now when you say open, what Open is pointed right, closed is pointed okay. left. Okay, so I need to come about right here. That's this, about this right. Consider open. That'd be a little open. That'd be square. And then That'd be shut. Shut. Okay. So about right here. That's perfect. And then from here, I'm lining this up like this. Yeah. Kick that front foot mm -hmm. out about 20 degrees. That's a bit severe there. There we go. Ball position wise, you want it two balls forward of your midline, which is right where you're at. Okay. Left arm stays long. Point the butt end of the club at the target line at the top. Sweet. Okay, so that's spun right to left, that's called a draw or a hook. Anything that spins off left to right is called a slice or a cut. Okay, so a slice is anything that goes what? Off to the right. Anything that goes to the, to the left? Is a hook or a draw. Hook or a draw, anything to the right is a slice. Correct. Show me the top of the swing and stop. Okay. Close. Let's just get it more right there. Okay. That's perfect. Good. Good. That was this. We went nicely to the top. We went nicely to the top and then we swung from there. We didn't ever shift our weight forward. We went here and then almost stayed on that back foot. So okay. we go to the top and there's actually a little shift to the left as the arms stay tall. Okay. Tiny bit of pressure shift into the left foot and then you go. Okay. Just like we're skipping a stone. Close. out of there after the strike. That's, that's just this. We go here, bang, oh, that's we lose our posture. So instead of losing that, we're feeling left shoulder down, okay. right shoulder down. See how my head stays where it's at in space yep. as my chest turns. Okay. I would rep the hell out of that. Left okay. shoulder down, right shoulder down while without moving your okay. head. Got you, got you. It's like you're lifting weights and like you all of a sudden you just like pop up and out of your posture. Grips looking better. 